going live right now. Oh, cool. I can see it. Good. Well, it, it says it's still setting it up on my end, so we'll take a look real fast. Right, it says live on Facebook, Perfect. live in the Impala. Are you seeing it live on your end? I say it says oh, live on the screen. screen. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let's do this. If any of you are watching us on Facebook Live right now, stand by. We're going to get started in just a couple of minutes. Thanks for being here with us. I'm going to wait on the rest of the crew to get here. Got an action packed afternoon here over the next hour with Coach Ben. Uh, and if you'd like, if you're here, you can go ahead and uh, give us a thumbs up or uh, say hi. Hey, Tracy, Shalini, Jeff Huffman, perfect. Welcome, guys. Uh, feel free to post some questions along the way as we're doing this as well. We'll give it about one more minute before we get started. Exciting times in technology, isn't it, Ben? It is exciting. This is all fun for me. It's like new toys every day you get to play with. Right. Isn't it cool? Well, you know, you and I were chatting about this the other day, just before we get started about how so many of these things that, that everybody's uh, testing or more feverishly implementing in their businesses. I, I think we're going to speak around on the other side of this. So maybe you could touch on that a little bit more as we dive in today. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody. One o'clock on the East Coast and uh, not one o'clock. If you're somewhere other than the East Coast, uh, we're here with Coach Ben for the first edition of what we're calling Digital Wednesday or Digital Marketing Wednesday. Uh, so Ben's going to walk you through some of the cool stuff that they are already doing out on the cutting edge of things, uh, teach you how he's doing those, and make some suggestions on things that you can implement in your business. As we roll along through today, feel free to throw some comments in the comment section here on Facebook Live, uh, and we'll also put a link toward the end of today's uh, meeting. We'll put a link toward a, a Google form that you can fill out if you'd like to submit future topics for us to dig into on next Wednesday or subsequent Wednesday. So uh, Ben, go ahead and take it away for us, please. Awesome, excited to be here, guys. So we're gonna talk about specifically today, online seminars, and we're really gonna hit a buyer seminar we did last week. And the first thing I say right off the bat, I told Bill this last week when we were doing it, because he was asking me questions. I was like, I don't really know what's gonna happen. We're just gonna, we're just gonna put it together and do it. And it went really well on several fronts, and we learned a lot of stuff on other fronts, too. So we wanted to share some of the things we learned with you guys, some of the ideas, but also how we set the whole thing up. So uh, once everybody started going to this lockdown phase, you know, that you can't be out in front of people, my first thought is always, how can I get in front of the most people at one time? And for me, in terms of lead generation in my career, I've always enjoyed teaching and getting in front of rooms. So I was like, well, we'll just take the assets we already have in place, which is buyer consultations, buyer seminars, um, things that we've done before, and let's just turn it into a digital online seminar. And um, so to set that up for you, we ended up having well over 200 people register for our event. We had 62 people raise their hands who wanted more information from our lenders or with our agents. Um, and those numbers sound really, really good. I think there's a lot more to that, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first, let me take you back to the things that we did before this whole thing even started. So you get an idea that you're not just going to go out and create a seminar, put it online on, on a Facebook event and go, oh, 200 people are going to sign up in five minutes. There are some specific steps that we did beforehand. And the first really centers on what I'm, and this is a term you want to write down in your notes, because I'm telling a lot of our buyers and sellers this when they're evaluating who they're working with, are what are your digital assets that you have in place right now? So when we were setting up this event, the first thing I looked at was um, three key areas of our digital assets. The first was our websites. I said, what, what can we do on our websites to promote the event? How much traffic are we getting? How can we make sure we're funneling people to the right spot? Um, and for us, our websites are our three big areas right now. Our, our hub website, which is our main blogging website. We put a lot of our videos on there. Our content goes on there. We drive a lot of traffic there. There's not a really a lot of lead generation intent behind that. It's more of an informative site for people. The funnel is built there, though, to send them down the line to – uh, different websites we have in place. Other websites we have are niche websites, so like listing specific websites for sale by owners, expired, things of that nature. 
And then finally, our IDX website. Uh, that's where we, we funnel people into when they're looking at property. So uh, uh, part of our website funnel is to send someone to our hub website and, and talk a little bit about um, uh, maybe it's an, an article on how to save your home. And then for inside of that article, we'll embed something that sends into a niche website on listing your home. And then if they want to get a valuation of their home, that funnel then drives into our IDX website. So we had these funnels in place for our, our on the website side of things that created a lot of traffic and flow um, in that first category. The next category I look at are our social media assets. So this is everything from what accounts do you have? Are you on Facebook? Are you on LinkedIn? Are you on Instagram? What kind of followings do you have on those accounts? So that when you put this event out there for people, how are they following up with you? How are they learning about the event that's there? What, what are you doing? What kind of credibility do you have in the community that would cause them to sign up and want to listen to what you're talking about? And one of the key things here for us is that we have some of the biggest groups in our local area that are that are uh, real estate directed. So our two groups, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, uh, just the, the power of Facebook groups right now is incredible. It's incredible what we're seeing um, in terms of organic growth in the past two weeks. And uh, so for us, we had our groups there and they're community focused on real estate. So one of our groups has close to 20,000 members in it. Another group has close to 12 or 15,000 members in it. So we were able to post events in there and drive a lot of traffic that way um, for this particular event. The final digital asset we looked at was our CRM because we realized that we could uh, go in and email this invite out to anybody, right? So this is a really low friction touch to people because I'm not asking them for anything. I really just wanted to update our local community on what was going on in the market, kind of walk them through the buying process, advantages we saw. Um, and I'll tell you more about like the specifics of the, of the, of the webinar or seminar that we did. But overall, it was just more of a, hey, if you're interested while you're sitting at home and you're bored, that was literally the context of the email was, hey, if you're at home, you have nothing to do and you're bored, come check this out. Here's what's going on in the housing market. You expressed interest at some time. And I find that a lot of agents have very robust uh, data data banks or databases full of people, um, whether from inbound lead gen or for people in your community or events you've done in the past. So you can drive a lot of traffic from there as well. So review your digital assets and say, what do I have in place right now that when I go to promote this thing, you're not putting a ton of muscle behind trying to get people to sign up for it. Um, you're more just putting it in the, in the right places for them to see it. So uh, what, when we did the webinar, the, the, some more tactical stuff we did. So I, I really wanted to focus on how can we turn this oper this, the, the, the uncertainty into an opportunity for our database. Um, or for people in general in our community. So we really focused the content of our webinar on three key areas. Um, the first was uh, why this timing right now is different than 2008. So that made up the first portion of the webinar. The second part of it was how to frame um, the home buying process if you're a home buyer. So how to think about it right now in the right mindset so that I kind of encourage people that, you know, now is not the time to be super fearful or afraid. Now is the time to really look at the opportunities in front of you. And then the third part of that was advantages to home buyers. So what advantages do we see in the market? And this was just something we came up with in the team of what do you see as an advantage to a home buyer in the current market? So we just, those are the three big sections we did. Um, and and the, the tactical way that we set this up, we used a Zoom webinar uh, account to do this. Side note on Zoom webinars, um, you need to sign up for the Zoom webinar portion of it unless you're only going to limit the meeting capacity to 100. So if you have a paid account, I think they're like 15 bucks or something for a Zoom account, uh, it can have up to 100 people in the webinar. If you go beyond that, you need to sign up for a Zoom webinar account, which is an add-on to Zoom, and then you can have a much larger audience. So one of the, one of the mistakes we made uh, when we were putting this together was we had such a good big response to it. Um, that we had people getting locked out of the room. We had people not, not being able to get into the webinar at all. Um, it kind of turned into a little bit of a sloppy mess there for a minute as we just had so many people uh, uh, trying to get into it. And what we think happened after looking back at tracking links and everything, we saw that it got forwarded a lot. So we're wondering, or well, pretty much guessing here, that they, they probably got into the webinar without registering for it on the front end. So that's why it got over capacity. 
Um, so, so Zoom's what we use to facilitate it. It's, a, it's probably the easiest tool right now to use for any kind of uh, online webinars. And if you're going to stream it anywhere, super easy to set up. Uh, to register for the event, we used Eventbrite. And we use, there's, a, there's a ton of different platforms out there you can use. I really like Eventbrite just because, one, it's simple. People have used it before. It, now, it lets you put online versus it being an in-person event. So if you've ever used Eventbrite, that's useful for that. We also liked it because it had reminder emails in it. So I could send an email out confirming that they were on uh, or signed up for the particular webinar that we were doing. And then uh, all the details would be sent to them over however many days I wanted to be sent to them. So they could have three follow-up emails, five off, you could have 10, 15, 20 follow-up emails, whatever it is, to remind them about the webinar. And that was one of the key things that I've noticed is that people will sign up for and then totally forget about it. So we kept on, uh, I think we have four or five reminders built out so that people would just get the, uh, the Zoom webinar uh, link and then the login information over and over. Um, and, and then as for content within those slides, so the slide deck we used, the other, the other tool we used was Keeping Current Matters. It's a service that gives you really good national stats. It's not the prettiest in terms of the, the data they pull out, so they're, the, they're not super visually appealing. The data is very sound, though, and it's really good uh, infographics for people so they can see it, they get the content, and they understand it really, really easily. So it's good digestible content for your database or for any kind of presentations you're doing. So we just use a lot of those slides they already have built out for you in there. Um, and we put all that in, and then we put it into uh, a webinar format and, and ran the webinar. And overall, it went really well. We, we did not facilitate questions during the webinar. Um, I, I think going forward, one of the things we'll do is actually limit the size of the webinars and kind of pull back on that a little bit so that we're not overwhelming um, the, either the platform or from what I saw that if we were to take questions, there would be so many people on it that it wouldn't, it wouldn't work fluidly, which is a big piece of it uh, going forward. Um, so I, I think overall, we saw it as a big success. Some other areas you could do this in. So this was just our first time out the gate trying it. It worked pretty well. Again, we're tweaking some things on it. You can look at doing this in every area of your business right now. Uh, one of my big things I'm telling all of my people, and I keep on saying this to everybody that I coach right now, so they're probably sick of hearing it, is that uh, right now is the best time in the history of mankind to talk to people because we know where they're all at. They're all, they're most, most people are at home right now, and most of them are on their screens. I know a lot of people are talking about tracking their screen time on their iPhones and how it went up like 40, 50, 100% from the week before. They're on their phones. Um, they're interested in what's going on in the real estate market. They're interested in, 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 in the, how they can take advantage of it or what opportunities there are, so present that information to them. So when you go through the levels of it, you can have one for home sellers. You can have one for your investor group. That's one big area we're really paying attention to right now. Um, we're seeing a lot of the national iBuyer programs are tracked out of our market. So we put together a quick iBuyer thing for, for people in our community so that in case they were in the middle of an iBuying transaction, they got canceled, or if they were considering it, now they don't have that opportunity, we can rally and put that thing and put it in front of them on a digital, uh, uh, how, how our investor group can help them. Um, and you can also do it for your investors. Say, hey, any investors that are interested in working with us, here is a webinar on investing and how we operate and the opportunities we see and how we're going to help facilitate those things for you as well. Um, the, the last thought on the webinar piece, I would say that uh, think beyond yourself. So don't. So one thing that I was talking with one of my team members about the other day was um, it, I, I don't mind getting in front of a camera, obviously, and chatting for a while and, and just talking about stuff. What we found, though, was that it'd be it was a really good idea on their end to bring your vendors in, let them come on and talk to people, let them tell them how they're operating right now with everything going on. Are we still operating under what conditions? How are your home inspectors doing home inspections? And then letting them educate them. Some of our people don't wanna be on camera. So we asked them uh, if they would present us with like a top 10 list of things for home buyers to look for when they're going on a home inspection or top 10 questions to ask your home inspector when you're at a home inspection. Um, the things like that. So think through your vendor list and say, who can I bring on here to help educate people? Um, the last piece of all of this that I'll say, and then if we have any questions, we can start there or I can dig into the next piece. Uh, when, when we look at the back end of this, record everything you're doing. 
record everything you're doing. And all of these platforms make it super easy now for you to record these webinars. This is your digital library of content for you to either market to people, to pull out and put into different uh, mediums like uh, for us, we're using in our in our drip campaigns. So we're seeing really good responses from people right now when we send them a video. So any of these videos that you do on a home buying, home selling uh, seminar, um, it's a really good opportunity for you to send that out later. So while you have the time right now, record as many webinars as you can, get in front of people so you can build your pipeline up. But then on the back end of this, this is content for you to send out later. We're seeing a really good uh, open rate and click-through rate on the webinars that we're sending out to people in our pipeline. And it's just, again, my, my favorite thing that Gary Vaynerchuk talks, talks about is the pillar content, right? So anytime you create a piece of content, how can we use it in two, three, five, ten other places? Um, take these webinars and seminars and use them to help convert leads that you're getting in. Use them to help you convert leads and nurture them down the line. And then also make sure you're putting them into uh, a different drip campaigns for, for your people um, to use in the front end. So, we, like, for example, I'll tell you one we did recently. Uh, I did this earlier this week, I said Wednesday, I did it Monday, uh, on for sale by owners. And how can we help them in this current market? If they're not uh, uh, right now digitally exposed to people, they're severely limiting their chances of selling in this market. And they're much more receptive to that conversation. So we did a series of videos on this, one to three minutes long. And uh, we started emailing it out or sending it out to people. I asked after we talked to them, I said, hey, are you interested in this? We've gotten a really good response off of that. And now that's going into our drip campaigns to nurture them whenever they do decide to use an agent at some point. So there's so many different ways you can reuse this content besides just a single seminar. So I think my favorite thing right now is uh, before you would do a seminar or, or teach a class or something, and it would pretty much, you know, you do it one time, then it goes and dies. This is this will live forever either through your drip plans or for you to use down the line for to educate home buyers or home sellers. So Ben, I'll jump in here for just a second. Great job on all of that. One of the things that I love about the way that you guys have done this, and then I want to get to a couple of questions that came up, is, is you've gone about this thinking about what's the most common question that a buyer or potential buyer in the market has right now, and then you've created sort of this digital funnel to walk them through that, both through pillar content and landing pages and the, the virtual seminar. So I think it's a really, really smart idea. A uh, question uh, that came from Megan, thanks Megan for that is uh, start to finish on the marketing and promo. Uh, how long did that take? And then uh, I know you touched on a little bit of this at the, the very top. For those who dialed in a little bit late, just uh, real quick bullet points, how did you do it? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, uh, total transparency again, because that's what we're here for, is we did it really quickly. So we went top to bottom on this promo time. I think it was like from the time it burned a hole in my brain that I wanted to do it to execution, three or four days overall. So we've moved really, really quickly, which again is why we had some hiccups in the execution department. Um, we, we were, I was interested in being one of the first people to cut through the noise rather than let the noise build up and people not hear us. So we were very interested in trying to engage as much of our community as possible. And um, so we moved very quickly on the promo piece of this, just sent a lot of content out to people um, and, and what we're what we're realizing right now is people really value authenticity with everything that's going on, all this uncertainty that's going on right now. They're very open to someone who's being very authentic. So they're OK. And I interpret authenticity as being OK with imperfection. So we, were, we went pretty fast on the promotion of it. And again, just a quick recap from, from what we talked about at the top of the call here. Uh, we really dug in on three of the key areas. We promoted it through our website, so our hub, our niche, and our IDX website. We made sure that there were landing pages driving this content, uh, promoting it in, in there, because we get a good amount of traffic on that organically as it is right now. Um, and then socially is our second key area we promoted it through. So what accounts do you have, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, things of that nature. And then, and then really within Facebook for us, the two key things we really did well was the Facebook event uh, it, it, because people just, that just gets promoted organically within Facebook so well that uh, when it went to the marketplace, uh, people were, were, were clicking on it, interacting with that. And then our Facebook groups. So that's, that's a big thing. And I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the Facebook groups are just incredible. I, if, you guys, if you guys are in a community where they do not have a real estate focused Facebook group, 
I would strongly encourage that you go out and do that. Um, uh, we were looking at numbers this morning. And we were just laughing because we averaged around 50 to 100 organic people joining our groups on a weekly basis. Um, we've added close to 2,000 people in the past 12 days. And that's just them wanting to join on their own. And they all want to buy or sell, and they're interested in the market. So then what we did on the backside of this, too, was after we recorded the seminar, we dropped that video inside of our groups that, that, we, that we run, and we have different forms and home buying guides and things of that nature that they can sign up for. Um, and that, that's gone really well as a secondary follow-up to what we already did inside of those groups. And then beyond that, uh, the third key thing is promoting it to your CRM. So our, our database, uh, we're, we're pretty communicative with them right now on a weekly basis, trying to let them know what's going on in the market, you know, giving them updates on our procedures or protocols, the typical stuff you're seeing all across social media right now. We're being very intentional about communicating that to our database. So um, I encourage anyone who's going to do any kind of, of a webinar or a seminar platform dig into your database, really email it out to everybody, uh, present it to all those cold leads that you have sitting there. So um, one of our one of our accounts has like 10,000 leads sitting there from what we generated over the years. And we just sent a mass email to them and sent it out to everybody. And it, we had a pretty decent open rate and a pretty decent sign up rate from our email list. So I think that's another reason why we had such a high turnout of people was by uh, was by promoting it to to the uh, to the database and the CRM overall. Um, and yeah, so I, I think really concentrating on those three areas, anywhere you're, or, and again, right now, I keep on telling everybody, any, anywhere you feel like you're lacking right now, now is a great time to build it out. If you feel like your websites are a little bit substandard or sub, you know, subpar compared to everyone else's, take some time to build them out right now. Uh, you know, add things in that you think is critical for you to do. Um, for us, we've been really focusing on different social content. So uh, anything from doing Facebook Live, like you're watching right now, um, to to doing other. Uh, hey, everybody, this is the part where I start playing guitar and singing and dancing while we wait on Ben to come back. Uh, only kidding on that. Stand by for just a second. We'll see if we can solve the little technical difficulty that we're having. Thanks. Uh, ben, Ben's dialing back in right now, everybody. I will uh, drop for you in the comment section uh, how you can reply uh, to our survey that we're doing. Uh, so stand by for just a second on that. And uh, so I just put a link in there. You guys are welcome to comment uh, via the Google form for any topics we're going to cover here in just a second. So stand by, please. Are we back? We are back, sir. The stage is yours. All right. Where are we at? Uh, so we were just closing the loop. I, I did a little song and dance. You missed all of that. It was karaoke time with Coach Bill. So uh, everybody just put a little bread in the tip jar, and we're good to go. Uh, so we, we were closing the loop on uh, on marketing efforts and how you guys went about promoting that. Uh, one mm -hmm. quick question that came up, and you could either ad address this here or or uh, toward the back end of this as we uh, go here another 20 minutes or so. 
uh, is can you take those webinars that you're doing or those virtual courses that you're doing and post a recording of them to YouTube or otherwise archive them? Or would you want to just keep doing it as recurring live events? That's a great question. So that, that's, that's really asking the question of an evergreen webinar. So I think it's a really smart idea. Um, we, we've toyed, or I should say, I've toyed with the idea of running them as a uh, video ad on Facebook and cutting certain pieces out and using that to drive traffic back to our websites again. Uh, so I think it's a smart idea, and and it's something that we've uh, uh, thought about doing. We haven't executed on it quite yet. Um, uh, overall, though, we're we are definitely in favor of building a repository of content as much as you can. So. Uh, it, I would say that it, on a weekly basis, if I was going to keep on doing the same webinar over and over and over, um, at some point I, I might start dialing it back a little bit and doing one live, one recorded, one live, one recorded. Um, but on the on the uh, as for creating a repository of content, it's a smart idea, and you can download them all from Zoom. So when you once a webinar is done. Um, same with the Facebook Live as well. You can download those videos and then edit them. You can add captions to them. You can add, you know, images to them if you want to, and then re-upload them anywhere you want. Um, Zoom files tend to be a little bit less high definition. They're not bad. Uh, they're a little bit less high definition. So when you upload them into YouTube, you'll notice a little bit of a difference in terms of quality of the video and things that they're uh, that that's in it. Uh, but overall, you, you store them in YouTube, and then you can either keep them as part of your content strategy where you're producing these things on a weekly basis. I, I don't think anything's particularly wrong with that, especially just providing value to people, because what we're finding is people are now starting to really check us out digitally, especially now that they have time on their hand. Um, and if you have tracking protocol set up or URL parameters, you can really see where people are coming from. Uh, if you're using like bit.ly links, you can kind of get an idea where People are either engaging through an email they got or they're engaging through a, a, a thing you posted on Facebook or um, uh, or they're tracking you down YouTube. We've, we've watched people go from YouTube to our website back to a Yelp review page. Um, but the, it's a really good way for them when they're, they're checking you out digitally that if you have a good amount of content out there, one, it makes you look like a professional, right, that you know what you're talking about. So they, they build some trust and rapport. Um, and, and two, it shows that you're active. So one thing we've heard from some of the buyers that we're working with right now is that uh, they, they did go and look us up on Facebook. They went and looked us up on Instagram. They went and looked us up on YouTube. And one of the things that they really liked is that we uh, had had consistent content being posted um, because not only did it educate them, it let them know that we were still in the business. So uh, all that being said, if I'm recording webinars on a weekly basis, uh, depending on the content in the webinar, if it's uh, if it's like a one time thing where we're talking about a very specific instance in time, I, I might keep that as an unlisted thing on YouTube to use down the line at some point or maybe just for a few months uh, while it still has juice behind it. Um, but if it's more evergreen content uh, like buyer or, or a buyer consultation or a buyer seminar for first time home buyers or an investor seminar, that's probably something I'd list inside of my YouTube channel and then post it everywhere. So when people are checking you out digitally, um, they, they can see that one, you're still in the market. Uh, you're, you're doing business. And then you're also the professional voice of reason. So we've had people come in and talk to us and say that they, uh, they, they, they saw us as true experts in the community because of the content we're producing around market statistics and around different things we're doing. So I think a buyer seminar, for example, would be a great thing to have out there for everybody to come and view because they get to kind of see you, they get to hear you um, digitally, uh, and, and then they kind of build that relationship with you um, it, it makes me think about uh, if you think of anybody in your life that you respect or that you really enjoy listening to who's a big speaker or, or um, you know, maybe they're a motivational speaker and, and you hear their content, and you build that kind of relationship with them, even if you've never met them. Right. You have a certain level of respect for them. You have a certain level of connection with them, even if you've never met them one on one or shook their hand um, or done an elbow tap in today's world. Uh, you've never really gotten the opportunity to do that, yet you feel a connection with that person. Uh, it's the same thing with our clients and our prospects that are out there right now. The more content that you provide them that lets them build that authentic connection with you, the better. Um, so I think anytime there's an opportunity for you to put your face in front of them, 
in a manner that provides value to them, right? That's the key here. I will say this. I, I think producing content for content's sake is not a great idea. Um, really digging in on how can I provide valuable content that people can use, um, uh, that's, that's the piece that will help you stand out. Because like I said before, one of the reasons we executed so quickly on everything was because there was so much noise out there and there was so much fear that I felt, I felt compelled that we had to get our noise out there as quickly as possible. So it's a big thing to make sure that you're, you're working hard to stay in front of all that with your people. And these type of things give you such, I mean, give you and, and so much value to these. So you can rip the audio from this and use it as a podcast if you want to. And there's so many different things you can do with it. Um, but yeah, I would definitely build up a, a big content vault for yourself. That's great suggestions on that, Ben. So one of the things that you and I were talking about in advance of the call is uh, using digital to leverage things like contests. So I, I know a number of our clients had planned to have uh, live in-person events in uh, late Q1, early Q2. Uh, and obviously that has been derailed a little bit. So some of them have shifted over into contest or drawing mode. I know that's something you guys have been doing for a long time. So would you mind sharing with the folks some best practices or strategies around the digital contest, please? Yeah, yeah, it's a really great idea. Um, so the first thing with contests, and you can jot this down in your notes, Everything you do, make sure it benefits your local community in some manner. Everything you do, make sure it benefits your local community in some manner. Um, that's the best. That's the best lens to go through with contests, in my opinion. Do something that you can uh, you can give back to your local community. I know right now there's uh, I've seen so many great ideas on this. Um, uh, one thing we're fond of doing, we do a teacher giveaway every year. And, and it's where we have like a grand prize drawing with a big basket full of teacher supplies and gift cards and, and different things. And we, we, we like to market that to our, our database, our email list, um, but also on our Facebook page. And what we'll do with that, so what you can do if you're setting up a contest for this type of thing, um, currently you could do something to your local community. I know there are businesses uh, that need need support right now. So uh, maybe it's a, a giveaway on a weekly basis or maybe it's one grand prize giveaway or um, something along those lines. And what you can do is have as many people like and share your, your post or your page, give them some qualifications of what you want them to do. So what we would do for the teacher giveaway, for example, is we would say, uh, here's what we're giving away. We want you to like our page and share our page, our Facebook page. Um, and then we want you to tag the teacher in the comments. So nominate a teacher in the comments. Um, and that and that's something you can definitely do right now is have people nominate local businesses, right? So it'll grow your organic reach within your Facebook or within whatever social media platform you're running this through. And uh, you can promote it in that in that manner. Um, and then the other side of it is promote it to your database as well. We had a lot of people, and again, drive them back to one location. So if it's a Facebook post, tell them where the Facebook post is, link the Facebook post so they can go just click on it and go straight to it and do what you ask them to do. Uh, but it's a great thing to send out to your database right now. Um, it's a great touch opportunity for you to say, you know, uh, we had this event planned and this is what we're going to do with the funds that we were, we were planning to put towards that event. We're going to help our local community in some aspect, whatever that aspect is. And then you can set up a contest at the same time that benefits you and benefits the local community. Um, so I always look at these in terms of branding versus lead generation, branding versus lead generation. So uh, this is something we talk about in the digital marketing course uh, is, is what's the difference between a branding moment and a lead generation moment. And, and in this instance, I think that this is more branding opportunity for yourself. It's an opportunity for you to get your name out in the community you're sponsoring something that's local. So people appreciate local uh, local things right now. So anything you can sponsor locally is a big deal. Um, and it puts you as that realtor of choice in their minds, right? You're part of that local fabric that they're looking for. So that's a great branding opportunity. I, I think the mistake sometimes that we make is trying to turn this into a lead gen where we try to get down to the nuts and bolts of here's the exact ROI on this one activity that we did. Um, and you could measure it. Uh, we, we've seen over time that we generated, I think the last one we did was like 10 or 12 referrals came from it over time. Uh, it's, it's a little bit harder to nail down. The goodwill that you build, though, is that that's that's the part that's that's worth uh, that's pretty much priceless. So um, I would say come at it from the angle when you're putting all that together, that this is a branding opportunity for your business, for people to associate you with um, and then. 
and then the leads will come from it later. So that, that's it's good reach for your Facebook page, good reach for your groups. Um, that's that's one of those things that you can post in Facebook groups and people don't get mad about. Uh, anytime you say I'm going to benefit a local community. So if you're doing this, I would say to extend it even further right now. And you're going to hear me talk a lot about Facebook groups in the next several weeks is because we're just seeing such traction in those groups because Facebook made it a priority. They said this year they're really trying to promote Facebook groups. And I don't know if you guys have seen the advertising they've done for it. They're actually advertising on like TV channels and, and on Hulu and different places that the, the Facebook groups is bringing the community together. So they're actually giving a preferential treatment for, to people right now that they're suggesting you join these groups. Um, so if you have the opportunity to sponsor a local business or maybe you're going to run that contest in the next several weeks, you can do that and then uh, post it in a local group and it, will, it won't get shut down like other posts that get put in there where you're just like, here's a house, three bedrooms, two baths, buy, buy it right now. Um, they, they tend to shut those kind of posts down. But anything benefiting the local community is usually, usually pretty solid. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a great way to touch your database right now, too. So even if you're not doing it digitally and you're talking to your people, it's a great conversation point of, hey, we're doing this right now. I just want to let you know, here's what you can go do. Go to my Facebook page. All the instructions are right there. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, lots of great ideas there, particularly on the benefiting of the local community. And it's, it's totally important the way that you're mentioning it there. So uh, a couple other questions that have come up either in the thread or throughout some phone calls I've had this week. Uh, what are some of the things that you guys are doing uh, as buyers are less open to coming into listings or sellers are less open to having strangers coming in their house? I know this is, is not necessarily digital, although it could be uh, since you guys are on the leading edge of so many things. Uh, just be curious what you're up to there. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, to me, this is the greatest period of opportunity in the real estate business since 2008. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that in terms of, getting your pipeline built up for people in the spring and summer months. Um, the, the conversations need to shift a little bit is what we're finding with our people right now. And that's something we've been working really hard on is this is not a time to hard close somebody for a sale. This is the time to listen to where they're at and then meet them where they are. So uh, we're finding that people's main objection right now is uh, we want to wait until everything's over or everything's put on pause for the moment. So what we've been working with our agents on and in our conversations is we totally understand where you're at right now. Um, take me back before all this craziness started. What was your time frame and what had you looking or, or wanting to sell at that point? So we're trying to get an established time frame from before all this, because right now the big thing that's going on, it, it isn't that, they don't, that they're done buying or selling. It's that they're done right this moment. So we need to future pace them a little bit. Um, and that's what we're working on. So then after they tell us their time frame and their motivation, I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to be whenever this all clears up for them, whatever their time frame is. So then we take them to the future and say, okay, so when all this clears up, what's your time frame at that point? And from there, we say, well, we totally understand where you're at. And uh, what we're doing right now is really helping all of our buyers and sellers get ready because there's going to be a really narrow window of time where they have an opportunity to buy or sell a home while everybody else has retracted from the market. Um, the, for example, say there's five people looking at a home and three of them decide to wait until all this goes away. The two people that are prepared for this, um, it's a really good opportunity for them. They have a higher chance of getting that home. And for my sellers, we're just saying, you know, the people who are on the market to buy a home right now are very serious, right? There are still people out looking at homes and wanting to buy a home. So whether we do it now, or we do it later, it makes sense for us to go ahead and meet virtually, we don't have to meet in person, uh, meet virtually and have a conversation, um, show you what our processes are, show you our protocols, show you um, what makes us different, see if we'd be a good fit and get you set up so that when the market comes back or you feel comfortable getting back into the market, you're on step five instead of on step one like everyone else. So that's, that's literally how we're taking that conversation right now. We're having really good results from it um, by getting them to step five instead of step one. Uh, and then the second little piece of that that, that I'll touch on is uh, I think that consultations really have two big pieces from what we the way we do it. There's an information section and then there's the rapport building and section built on, you know, what their wants and needs are. 
So we actually went ahead and had all our agents record our presentations. So every agent has their own buyer or listing presentation recorded on a Zoom webinar. We send that out before our consultations now so that when we get on these Zoom webinars like this, we spend the whole time learning about them, hearing about their wants and needs in a home, pulling the MLS, looking up the comparables or what's on the market. So um, it cuts down on the total time by like 45 minutes to an hour we're saving now and leveraging that into building a relationship with them. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Well, Debbie and I were chatting about this yesterday too, and she made a really good point about uh, people are still in the decision-making process. They might've just been delayed a little bit. And whenever the smoke does clear on all of this, then uh, they're not going to be in the mode anymore where they're looking for agents or interviewing agents. They're going to look up and they're going to see that you were the one or that others who are on this webinar were the ones who stayed in touch with them during this period of time. And uh, one of the things that we've seen emerge too, and, and while I mentioned this, Ben, just think about whatever parting thoughts or comments you want to leave with the folks, and we'll wrap up here in just a minute. Um, as you're looking at the calibration of their timeline or motivation, most of them, and you guys have probably seen this too, they're saying, well, whenever this is over, then dot, 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 or whenever the dust settles on this, then dot, dot, dot. And that means different things for different people. Just to give you a couple of quick examples, it could be some people perceive that when the curve has finally flattened and, and the, the uh, number of new cases is declining, that that's going to be their moment to strike because they want to beat other buyers to the market once everything kind of ramps back up. Uh, and you'll have others that will say, well, when there's a, a, a pharmaceutical treatment for it or a vaccine for it or a whatever, or when there are zero cases anywhere, and all of those plot out along a timeline very differently. So I, I love what you guys are doing, Ben, is you're going, you're going back to sort of pre-coronavirus and asking what their level of motivation was. Then you're, you're sort of uh, calibrating all of that in between, looking at those things, and then being ready uh, when that trigger event happens. So I totally agree with you. Uh, on the other side of this is a massive, massive, massive opportunity for everyone who keeps working right now. Uh, so do this for us, Ben. Bring us home here over the next couple of minutes. Any parting thoughts for the group before we wrap up, please? Uh, I think the main thing on this first one is just uh, if you're thinking about doing anything digital, now's the time, right? Now's the time to take advantage and seize of this market shift that we're feeling. So I think this is going to be a fundamental shift, not just in how buyers buy and sellers sell, right? I, I think there's gonna be a fundamental, fundamental shift in how we do real estate going forward. I think Bill and I were talking at the top of this uh, before we got on and we were just chatting for a minute. And, and I mentioned that before this, having a Zoom meeting with someone was something that corporations did with each other. It is now a ubiquitous term that everyone uses um, that we're all on these Zoom calls together. So this is becoming standardized now, whereas before it was kind of the outlier, you would use it with relocation clients. Um, this type of technology moving into your business is here to stay because it's being forced on people. So I, I think that there's a big shift coming in how we do our businesses internally and externally. So take advantage of that. And then also, uh, whatever you do, get into action, just go do stuff. If you want to do a seminar, don't wait through two or three weeks until it's perfect, right? Just go do it, go test it out, see what happens. Even if one person shows up to your seminar, that's one more person than would show up if you were just watching Netflix. So go, go and do something per, uh, productive with your time. And the last thing then, this is my last, this is my last thought is, is take this time to sharpen your skills right now um, on all of this stuff, especially, and, I, I'm, and I'm, this is kind of like what Bill Gates likes to say, when, when you have a certain tool in your tool belt, that's the one you use all the time. Mine is digital technology, so that's the one I keep going back to. We're good at what we do with digital technology. We're we're ahead of a lot of people, and we and we can still get better every day. So right now, we're just going through everything and becoming masters at all this stuff. So that when we come on the other side, um, like I said, the little example of recording a buyer presentation that that just saved us forty five minutes to an hour per person. How much more effective are we now in building relationships and talking to more people in a day? So much more effective. So work on your skills through this whole time and really hone in on that. I love the point about it not having to be perfect, just getting out there and doing it. And in a fun way, this is kind of an example of that. Uh, and, and, you know, we had a little <laughs> connection issue and whatever else. It's like, oh, the heck with it. We'll, just, we'll figure it out as we go. Uh, the cool sure. part about this, too, on the buyer and seller side of things, and then we'll wrap with a couple little housekeeping items, is uh, the buyers and sellers in the market don't necessarily expect this type of stuff right now because other agents aren't doing it. So just the fact that you're out doing these types of things 
even if it's a five out of 10, instead of a nine out of 10, you're still head and shoulders above because you're, you're delivering above the existing level of expectation and you're beating your competition to it because your competition is too worried about what they might look like on camera or that they might not be able to do it perfectly. Uh, so we're excited to continue to do these digital Wednesdays with you uh, each week at 1 p.m. Eastern. You'll see in the comments thread here, uh, we pinned a link to a Google survey that you can fill out and submit topics that uh, ben and I will go through and he'll address for you in upcoming sessions. Uh, be sure to join us also uh, tomorrow if you're watching this live, which would be Thursdays, every Thursday at 5 p.m. We're going to do a fun little happy hour. My friend John Brewster, uh, who's a very, very talented musician, uh, guitarist, songwriter. Uh, so that'll be at 5 p.m. on Thursdays. Uh, here on this channel. And then Friday at noon, we'll be doing Thought Leader Friday. Each week, a high-profile thought leader uh, from either the industry or somewhat connected to us uh, who's going to share their perspective. So this Friday, 12 noon Eastern, uh, Debbie and I will be interviewing Jenny Wiemert. Uh, Jenny's team was the number 34 ranked team in transaction sides last year in the entire United States. They closed $265 million worth of volume. Uh, it'll be an interview not to miss. Uh, so let's give it up for Ben, and uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Ben. All right. Bye, guys.